Hi, in the last video I replaced the Pololu boards with the Pimoroni Servo 2040 board on my main hexapod. But because I still want to support the old setup, I'm going to build a second hexapod to use the Pololu boards. So I decided to try some new ideas with the new build instead of just repeating the old design. For example, I wanted to take another stab at trying to use cheaper servos to bring the total cost of the build down and make the hexapod project more accessible to everyone. If you remember, I tried doing so and failed in one of my previous videos. And the main problem was that the cheap servos that I had were constantly overshooting, which made it impossible to create any smooth movements using them. So I gave up at the time and used more expensive but dependable servos instead. But a lot have changed since then, and I've learned a few things. For example, I noticed that even the Zoske servos started to overshoot after some use, which was affecting the movements. One theory was that because the plastic parts on the idler side of the servo wear over time, the fitment got slightly loose, and as a result the servos have some extra play. This was also proved to be the case based on the discussions on my Discord server and other members' experiments. So I designed some new parts by keeping that in mind to use with my MG996 servos and gave it another try. The parts are shorter to cover for some of the lost torque, but more or less follow the same design pattern. For this test I'm using a 6 volt battery with the Pololu board and the latest Chica app. And as you can see, the overshoot is completely eliminated. And seems like I'm on the right path for being able to use these cheap servos. But you may ask what was the real difference? The actual fix was pretty simple. And the key was this little ring inside the servo back piece, which adds just a tiny amount of friction to prevent the overshoots. The advantage of using a ring like this over just fitting the parts tightly in the first place is that the ring is super easy to print and I can just swap it out for a new one once it wears down. Even though using a ring adds more friction and more load on the servos, it helps the servos hold position easier, so it may even out at the end and it's not all downside. So far it works perfectly as you can see here. So I went ahead and bought a full set of MG996 servos to complete the build for the second hexapod. My hope is that by using these servos along the Servo 2040 board, we can release a low cost version of the hexapod for just under $150. And once I unlock the full potential of the smartphone such as the Vision and the long range FPV, this setup will be extremely hard to beat price wise. That's why I'm really excited about this project and wanted to share my progress so far. And I can't wait to complete the new hexapod and show you the final result. But that will be in another video. That was it for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.